Well, your girl is back with another different type of hydroponic system that you can set up inside of your home. In this video, it is all about the DWC, the deep water culture system that I'm actually growing tomatoes in. It's right there. I'm gonna explain the setup, let's go. What's going on my planet peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, house plants and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And in this video, it's all about that right there. I know it's got a plastic bag on it. There's a reason for that, but that will explain that later on in the video. Right here, I have my DWC system, which is a deep water culture. Now, what is the difference exactly between the DWC and like a crack key? Well, the crack key method, if you haven't seen that, I've done a you know, few videos on my crack key system method type of deal. But the difference is with the crack key method, there is no bubbler. There's no oxygen being circulated in, you know, within the water. Now that can be okay when it comes to small plants, like maybe lettuce or maybe some leafy greens. But when you're getting into larger plants, like tomatoes, I found that just water is not enough. And I'll go into that in later in the video because I show you that. But in the end, it just, the DWC system seems to be really a lot better when it comes to something larger, like tomatoes. And it just happens that I have tomatoes growing on this. Now, in order for it to be a proper DWC system, you would need to be adding some air bubbles. And that is what differentiates it from the crack key system or from any other method, really. After I set up my whole entire system and everything, life got in the way, nursing got in the way. So I kind of just neglected it and you know didn't really set up the air stones and all of that. So I have that in the video where it's gonna show you like, mm, that water is not the best exactly when it comes to just, it's basically stagnant water. So once I did add on the air stone and got the bubbles going and everything, it was fantastic. It was way better. The, you know, the water was a lot clearer. It just looked a lot more healthier. So I'm gonna show you with the bubbler and without the bubbler, but either way, it works out good. You may be asking yourself, Jack, why in the world do you have a plastic bag around your tomatoes? Ah, good question. That is for humidity purposes, and I may, I don't think I'm gonna to touch on that topic in this video. I, there is gonna be a part two, you know, to this video with the pH, the humidity, and all that stuff, but that's for a later video. Oh, now, technically this bin was used for something else. These were breathing holes, so I gotta find a way to tape them all up, and you said Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape. So I need, I need the Gorilla Tape, but for now, uh, yeah. I was if, thinking if, about those. If this is outside the a half inch, then we have to go at least a sixteen of an inch smaller because we had to thread it in, okay? And you're not gonna thread it in if it's the same size. The same size. size. So there's tape on the outside and the inside, and this stuff, the silicone or the you know water resistant stuff, is gonna be in between that. Hopefully, I would not have any problems. It goes like this. I'm gonna put this at the end of the basin. And then of course I'm gonna hook up a clear tube onto the top piece and this is gonna let me know how much water I have inside of this bin. That's where I'm coming, this is the part where I'm having the problem though, is finding the right piece to make this happen. Now I was watching a video where the guy was using an electrical conduit piece to make this happen. I couldn't find that very same piece at all so I wound up coming up with this. I'm gonna need some rubber washers too, so I have two of those. Those are some general washers. Now I also have a washer too. This does not go for this one, but I made it happen and it has the right threading. So this, these two pieces are gonna be on the inside and that's gonna hold it in place. I'm also gonna be using this stuff right here. Now you can use silicone as long as it's waterproof, that'll be fine. But either way, I have a washer right here and then I'm just gonna be using some of this waterproof silicone stuff all right I think that's as far as it can go so now I'm just gonna leave this and let it dry okay that's not going anywhere You better not start with my cat. You want 
smell that? No, don't bite it though. No, it can't, get, get, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? The air pump is gonna push some air through the tubing, through the air stone, and then create bubbles. That is what's gonna really help inside of that DWC. Now I know I did a boo-boo right now. As you see, it, the lid is actually yellow and black. That is because I preemptively started spraying it without putting the holes in first. And obviously, as a result, and of course I left this in the elements. Don't leave that in the rain. When you're growing your plants inside of this DWC system, you're gonna have to grow the tomato seedlings as it is. But the tomato seedlings are gonna be very, very small for this system. Notice that my light right there, it's not large enough to hold or withstand like a bunch of little seedlings. So what I had to do was actually grow those seedlings up in different stages using different containers. I started off with a little Tupperware from the dollar store just for my seedling starts. Then I moved up to a larger container and did the same thing, larger and larger until they were large enough, the plants, to go into that system, you know, with that light. Another thing I would have changed is what medium, grow medium I was using for the seedlings. Because once you had the seedlings and you wanted to transfer them up into the next stage, you know, the larger stage, you couldn't get the neck cup out of it. And I was not gonna stress out and pull out the roots. It wasn't gonna happen. So the next time I'm gonna do that, no neck cup, no, none of that stuff. I'm gonna go straight pool noodle from the beginning. I need it a little tighter so I know that this will not move around. So I am putting another piece of foam in it and then closing it because I really wanna secure that plant inside of this noodle. So here we go, we drop that in the water. Uh, that water is not looking the best. I am not feeling it. Look at all that stuff floating. Put the hose on the pump and turning it on to see if everything's running right. So you have a air stone connected to them hoses and then you connected it to that thingy majiggy over there. This is the air pump. We do the test with hose and at the end of the hose is what? An air rock. Cool. It even looks cleaner. It needs more water already. Yeah, but the water it needs looks more water. You don't see that? What? The water looks cleaner since so we put the bubbler. Oh, wow. Right? Oh my gosh, it needed so much. You may have to do that like twice. Give it like 10 gallons. Problem was, is that I actually have a hard time getting in this to see what's going on inside, and let alone, you know, to try to refill it. So that is a definite problem. Um, I'm sure that could be modified though. Ever since I added the air stones, the quality of the water and the color, the, the clarity, everything has just gone way better. So this, you know, it would work if you did it with the crack key, but it probably would not be as good as it is. Hey, ramen. What are you doing? One thing I also noticed is that the tomato plants, these are determinant, which means they're technically only supposed to get up to like three feet tall. Only thing is, I must be doing something right because my plants got to like four, four and a half feet tall. And I had to start cutting them back down because they were getting too tall. I really did, but it's okay because I want to propagating those pieces. So I want them getting still continuous tomato, you know, tomato plants the entire time. But what I had to do was add on some sort of stakes to the, to the system because them tomato plants were so tall, they just kept toppling over. So of course I had to go the cheap method because I, I didn't think of that ahead of time. I had some leftover PVC in my home. So I cut a bunch of pieces off and put them toward the ends of the plants. So then I just attached the plants to the PVC. Jose took one large PVC, bent it over, so I can just hold it from the top using string. Yeah, yeah, so now I have to cut down. All there. right, see I like how you did that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's temporary, you can make it look nicer, but. what do you use to bend it? Egon. Ah, nice. 
Mechanics always got a heat gun. There you go. All right, that worked out. That took care of the problem with the center. You did that. I mean, yes. Is this like really ghetto? Yes, it is. But does it work? Also, yes. Really? It's not? No, it's just we're using materials that we have at hand. Right, because we're broke. And we had to like, you know, right, make ghetto. it work. It's, a, it's, it's, it's ghetto. It's ghetto. It's ghetto. It's ghetto. It's ghetto. It's crafty. It's, well, it is. Well, it's true. It's like jerry rigging or like MacGyvering. It's crafty. That's a good way of putting it, crafty. All right, but it works though. After noticing a bunch of leaf curl from my plants, that's when I had to jump into action. I mean, I was getting tomatoes still, but the fact that I was getting boatloads of leaf curl, that cannot be really good. And you're adding a lot of additional stress to your plant. Not cool. So what I did was I put a plastic, clear plastic bag over the tomatoes because that can help retain some humidity. You take a spray bottle, mist, mist, mist up inside of there, hold, you know, like tie up the bottom of it to retain all of that humidity. Now I'm hoping that will help out my tomatoes, but we shall see. I know you're not gonna have a lot of tomatoes just to get yourself throughout the winter time. I know, could you just, you know, sustain yourself just with this one system? No, you can't. But what does it bring me? Joy, peace, chill, calmness, and stress relief. So to me, that's worth it. And you get tomatoes, free therapy. And you get tomatoes in the end of it. So I guess it still works out and I'm happy for it. If you did enjoy this video and you wanna show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video now faithfully again every week. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget the notification bell because without the bell, you won't know I'm dropping a video. And last but not least, Catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. So until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check you out later. Peace and love.